So basically, I am a massive comic book fan, and Batman is my favorite superhero. And that is definitely a good thing when it comes to adaptations, because there are a lot of Batman ones. My second favorite DC hero, Green Arrow, only really has one adaptation, unless you count that one short nobody remembers. And while Arrow is pretty good, it would definitely still be nice to get something new from him. My third favorite's Blue Beetle, and I swear if that movie doesn't happen. I mean, they literally cast the best possible actor as him. And while I'm sure they won't cast the best possible actor for Ted Kord, getting an adaptation of Blue Beetle where he is the main character would definitely be something I really want. It's something I have been wanting for years now. So hopefully it'll actually happen, unlike the Batgirl movie. Still, there are many Batman adaptations, and most people generally seem to lean towards one as being the best. And that one is Batman the Animated Series. Or Batas for short. And while I can agree that it is a really good show, and also gave us our best versions of Batman, the Joker, Harley Quinn, and many others, I cannot say that it is the best. In fact, I'd even argue that it's kinda overrated. Don't get me wrong, it's still a really good show, it's just, you know, not as good as everybody says it is in my opinion. Anyway, I think the best Batman show is The Batman. Now, if you have somehow never heard of this show, then you're probably kind of confused and thinking something along the lines of, Wasn't that a movie starring Robert Pattinson, Paul Dono, and Zoe Kravitz or something? And while technically you would be right about that, uh, I'm not talking about movies today, unless we're talking about the Batman vs. Dracula, but I'm probably not going to mention that again after this. Anyway, the main thing I will say that the Batman did better than Batas was storytelling, which is arguably the most important thing for a series. Sure, Batas had some good storytelling, but it was just not structured as well as it was in the Batman, with Batas having one to two episodes, really just about one story aside from a few exceptions, whereas the Batman had one to two seasons to build up to something bigger with Season 1 building up to Clayface, Season 2 to Hugo Strange being a real threat, Season 3 to Batgirl becoming a main part of the Bat Family, Season 4 to the Bat Family really being a thing, and Season 5 with the whole Justice League getting formed. The task kinda has a problem where, even though all of its episodes are good, a lot of them are one-off stories that don't really come up again, or if they do, they're still pretty disconnected. So, they're kinda fillery. And while the Batman has this problem too, it also doesn't at the same time because every episode does kind of have a purpose. Even the ones that you wouldn't think would. Now I will give Batas some credit because it is still a really good show, so here's some things that are actually better about it than the Batman. First of all, while I do prefer the overall art style of the Batman, I have you have to admit the overall character designs from Batas are better most of the time. The main one that shows this is obviously the Riddler. I mean, just look at his design in Batas compared to the one from the Batman. It, his one in the Batman looks terrible, man. I mean, I like a lot of the wild redesigns from the Batman. Firefly obviously has the best design in this show that he's ever had. And a lot of the other ones are pretty good. Some, I would argue, are even better than Batas, but... Just look at the Riddler! What did they do? Look how they massacred my boy! I mean, seriously, who thought a goth Riddler was a good idea? I, this is not how he acts at all, and the design just looks dumb, too. Like, wh whose ideal was this? I mean, I don't like his TNBA design either, but still. The only other character I can really think of that I think was too much was probably Hugo Strange. But at least at this show, he actually, like, is a threat, unlike in Batas, where he only appears in one episode. I mean, he's supposed to be one of Batman's most threatening villains, and he only appears in one episode? What were they doing? To be fair, though, uh, well, his design does look better when he's actually moving than it does when he's not. Now, I also do prefer the design and voice of Mr. Freeze from the Batman, but his characterization is just way better in Batas. There is a reason why his Batas backstory has been used in almost every incarnation of his character since the 90s, and that is because it is good. The thing is, though, the Batman just makes him a common crook again, and that really is a disservice to the character. Even though I do prefer the one from the Batman in terms of voice and appearance. Let's be honest, Clancy Brownie's voice Mr. Freeze and more stuff. 
And while we're on the subject of voice acting, a lot of the voices in the show have not really aged well. I mean, sure, a lot of them are the definitive voices for their characters, but that really is just something that's evolved over time. In this show, their voice acting was not very good. Harvey. No. Why didn't you tell us about your fear of flying? Now, honestly, that's probably just because most cartoons in the 90s did not have very good voice acting. I mean, just look at Spider-Man, the animated series. Back here, shocker! Shocker! But still, you, if you look at it objectively based on how it sounds in the actual show, the Batman obviously sounds better. In fact, the Batman also has some that I would argue are the definitive versions of their characters. I mean, Batgirl and Firefly, I'd argue their best voices are in the Batman, and, and that's that. I mean, here, just listen to a performance from Batman and Joker in The Batman and compare it to the task from earlier. Think this is a good look for me? Who are you? Joker. Not what? Who? <laughs> Smear free. It's permaclown. Boot of crowd. I will also argue that the Batman had better original villains than Batas did. Now, I know what you guys are thinking right now, but what about Harley Quinn? And to be honest, I do think she's kind of overrated. She's not that great of a character. She's not terrible, but she can be very annoying. Plus, her design has just gotten worse and worse since her debut, so yeah. Anyway, there's also one other character I could see the argument for, which is Lockup. But that's it. I mean... I think Baby Doll is annoying, and all the other original villains were either forgettable or just weren't very good. But in the case of the Batman 2004, while most people wouldn't know their original villains, I think they're a lot more interesting than the ones from Batas. I mean, there's Everywhere Man, Dave, Number One, Francis Gray, and, well, rumor isn't really anything special, but I hope you see what I mean. Additionally, the obscure previously established villains they tackled, such as Wrath and Scorn, Ragdoll, and Gearhead, were done pretty well, and the one obscure group of villains that both of the shows tackled, the Terrible Trio, are just way more interesting than the Batman. I mean, making them take the Man-Bat Serum was a stroke of genius, so that they're not just three dudes in masks. Of course, however, there is a massive elephant in the room, which is that, well, Batas got to use pretty much all of the major Batman villains at some point. The Batman had that stupid bat embargo, which meant they couldn't use four specific, really popular Batman villains, those being Scarecrow, Two-Face, Mad Hatter, and Ra's al Ghul. And while that could be argued to be something going against the show, it really isn't, because the show never really feels like it needs those characters, even if it would have been nice to see them. To be fair, though, with Robert Englund already working in the superhero animation industry at the time the show was ending, if we had seen Scarecrow, there's a good chance he would have been voiced by who I think is the best voice of Scarecrow. Phobophobia. The fear of fear. Our greatest achievement. Anyway, though, let's tackle some characters that were done better in the Batman than they were in Batman the Animated Series. To be honest, the Penguin from Batas is just not very good. I mean, first of all, his voice in Batas is just, it does not fit him at all in comparison to the one from the Batman. For weeks, I let rumors circulate through the underworld of my plan to steal a pair of priceless breeding condors from the Gotham Zoo. Sure enough, on the appointed night, guess who showed up? Joker? I'm the Batman. You see, the thing is, you're not! I just realized those clips go together really well. <laughs> anyway, the Penguin in Batas is just never really a big threat, whereas the one in The Batman is probably the second most developed villain in the show. And considering that the Penguin is supposed to be Batman's second or third biggest enemy, that really does show what the priorities were of Bruce Timm and Paul Dini when it came to using the Penguin, in comparison to the writers on the Batman using him. He's never even really the main criminal underworld villain in this show, like he's really supposed to be. That kind of goes to Rupert Thorne, 
Whereas in the Batman, while he isn't really connected to the criminal underworld as much, he's at least a threat that keeps coming back. Unlike in Batas, where he really is not there very much. Plus, in The Batman, we actually get to see the Penguin's origin story and the first time he faces Batman, whereas in Batas, his first appearance is I've Got Batman in My Basement, where he already knows Batman, and we never get to see his origin, really. Which, to be fair, I think that's because we're kind of supposed to assume it's his backstory from Batman Returns, but still, come on. Look, all I'm going to say about Bane in The Batman is that he doesn't have a stupid-looking nose hole. All jokes aside, though, he actually managed to break the bat in his show, unlike Batas, who didn't, and considering that that's his whole thing, he broke the bat. Did they not tell you about me, little turtle? Hmm? Huh? I'm the man who broke the bat! I think that shows just how much more intimidating the one from the Batman actually is. Take the money, take it! Pocket change. With the Batman gone, all Gotham is mine. To be fair, the Killer Croc from Batas, he at least was able to give good jokes. There I was, holed up in this quarry. When Batman came nosing around, he was getting closer, closer. And? I threw a rock at him. So, Harvey, what became of the giant Benny? It was a big rock. To be fair, though, that was just Batman in disguise. Plus, in the Batman, he actually looks like a crocodile, whereas in Batas, Croc looks like this. I mean, he just looks so much more threatening in the Batman. Listen, Mothball, there's only room for one killer here. That's Killer Croc. Whoa! I don't know what the artists were thinking with this design. I mean, he looks like a fucking gorilla. Excuse my French. While both versions of Poison Ivy are pretty good, the version from The Batman is just better. And Batash introduces a love interest for Harvey Dent, who is later revealed to be a... Is it bioterrorist? Eco-terrorist? I can't remember what she said in Harley Quinn, and I can't find the clip anywhere, so whatever. Anyway, in The Batman, she is introduced as a plants rights activist who ends up befriending Batgirl, and they kind of start a plant rights revolution? The revolution has begun. At least they try to, and that's probably better, actually, since now we get to see how she became Poison Ivy, and it was all her own fault. And we also get an even better connection to one of the main characters, since in Batas, her connection has to go through another character before we get to any actual protagonists. I've already talked about this one, but just to reiterate, this version of Doctor Strange is actually a major threat to Batman, as he should be, and appears a lot in the show, unlike the one from Batas, who only appears in one episode. Joker, please! I was set up! Bruce Wayne is Batman! Clayface is another one who is pretty good in both shows, but the one in the Batman is just better. Rather than being Matt Hagen with the backstory of Basil Carlo, this Clayface is a cop named Ethan Bennett, who is Bruce Wayne's childhood friend. Not only does he have a personal connection to the main character of the show, but it is also actually brought up almost every time he appears. Unlike with Two-Face and Batas, who kind of just turns into a much more generic villain. And doesn't really have much development after his transformation, Sure, we did get that one episode, but Clayface actually got a complete arc with him eventually being cured and Basil Carlo being introduced to make Bennett's past come back to haunt him. Uh, 
I might be really biased on this character because this is where I was introduced to him and Firefly is my favorite Batman villain. In fact, he might be my second favorite villain of all time, period, right behind Jango Fett from Star Wars. Well, Batas did have a pretty good Firefly, we just got to see a whole lot more of him in the Batman, and he eventually even got some character development by becoming Phosphorus, and while I didn't really like that he was never cured of that, that was still a really good episode for the character. Plus, his design and voice in this show is top tier. I fumble this ball, we're all toast. Honestly, the only way his voice could really be any better, in my opinion, is if they somehow got Alex Hirsch to come in and literally just do his Bill Cipher voice from Gravity Falls. I had no idea this could be so stimulating. Remember, reality is an illusion, the universe is a hologram. Bye, Gold. Bye! At the end of the day, while both shows are good and they both have their own faults, I do think the Batman was just better. It just had some better structured storytelling, better original villains, and it just overall it had better payoff for everything it did. Plus, I just think it's more fun to watch, and at the end of the day, that's all that really matters when deciding if you like something more, if it's more fun to watch. Also, the show has the best version of Killer Moth. Killer Moth! Heard the legendary penguin was recruiting. I'm here to throw in. Listen, I can help you guys. I got a lot of skills. Do enlighten us, Moth. Well, I got stealth skills, code breaking skills, karate skills, cocooning skills. What about coffee making skills? I take mine black. How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes, but now we're to run. The night I'm turning away. I'm sick of this life. I just want to say, how could this happen to me? By the way, I know my character looks like utter garbage, but this is what I get for making a character in MS Paint. <laughs>